Um, just quickly, I'm going to apologize because my husband was sick all last week and over the weekend and I woke up this morning with a sore throat. So if my voice starts fading, I'll continue on, but just bear with it. <laughs> um, I have been married for about 18 and a half years now. Uh, my husband and I married when we were 22. Um, we were both raised within a religious home um, where abstinence was encouraged. We were encouraged to save sex for marriage. Um, and, you know, I don't really remember my parents talking to me much about it. I mean, it's just lessons and things that I learned at church mostly. And it was just, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm not going to have sex until I get married. And I, you know, dated as a teenager and whatnot. And I always let people know up front that that's just not going to happen. Um, and I really had no idea that I would have vaginismus at all. Um, I never wore tampons. I never had a gynecological exam. Um, I was a lifeguard from about the time I was 14 years old. And so lifeguarding and not wearing tampons should have been a red flag. But <laughs> instead, I just kind of would avoid the water on my heaviest days and, you know, just stand up in the lifeguard tower. You don't have to get in the water every day, but so I would mostly just try to avoid it. And, you know, my mentality back then was, well, the first thing that's going to enter me is going to be my husband. I don't want a piece of cotton or a doctor's speculum to be the first thing in. So that was my justification. And I, honestly, I had no idea that we, that I would have this issue at all. Um, so I met my husband in college. We were, I'm from Southern Texas. He's from Southern California. We went to college in Idaho where we met there. And, um, I fell in love super quick with him, like knew right away that he was the man I'm going to marry. And, um, I think he knew pretty quickly too. And, you know, we enjoyed making out and being close to each other and really looked forward to the time we did get married. I looked forward to it. I was really anticipating. I didn't feel fearful at all. I didn't feel scared or nervous. I was just more like, let's, let's get married. Let's get this over with so we can get going. Um, uh, so when we did, we got engaged, we got married. And that night, obviously, it didn't work. Um, you know, it started out weird. He suggested, like, let's just try to relax a little this is all new to both of us, you know, let's just take it slow. It doesn't have to be something crazy to begin with. So, you know, we took a bath together for the first time and that was exciting and stuff. And then as soon as we got to the bed, um, it's like the best thing I can describe it is, is like an out of body experience. My eyes clamped shut, my body stiffened up and I started inching my way to the top of the bed and just tears constant tears and I'm like in my head thinking what the heck like why why am I reacting this way I've been looking so forward to doing this <laughs> and I couldn't understand it and you know immediately he stopped and he's like I'm so sorry I have like did I hurt you did I do something and I was like no I have no idea what's going on um so he's like you know it's no big deal let's just let's just get a good night's sleep we'll try again later we'll just do it when we're more relaxed um, so we'd gotten married in California, then we had to fly out to Texas for my reception at, with my parents. And then we were going to honeymoon on Kauai and we were moving to Oahu. So we we're heading to Hawaii after all of this. So after numerous tries, we were just like, let's just forget it right now while we're traveling around so much. And let's, um, let's try when we're on our honeymoon and we can relax. So yeah, we waited to try again until that happened. And it's the same thing. It's like an out-of-body experience. I, my body stiffened up. I clamped my eyes shut and I tried to crawl away <laughs> and cry. Um, and, you know, we just kept chalking it up to it's, this is what happens to most people who are virgins and they get married. It's freaky. It's scary. And, um, but, you know, weeks went by, months went by and there was no success and we didn't have any insurance yet. Um, and we found a, a clinic that did like women's health care. So they would do a pap smear and um, give birth control, things like that. So we decided to go there and see if I can do a pap smear and I can talk to a doctor there and tell them what's going on. And basically that doctor kind of threw her arms up in the air and was like, I don't know, have a glass of wine before trying, you know? And in my religion, we don't drink alcohol. So 
that was like, well, that's not going to happen either. Um, so we just kind of let it go again. And we would try sometimes, but most of the time it would just end up in tears and panic attacks and um, depression. Like I was never a depressed teen. I didn't feel like I was. Um, but I, I went into a big depression about it. I felt like a failure as a woman. This is the one thing that I should be good at. Um, <laughs> but I just couldn't do it. And I, we got insurance. I went to another doctor um, in, in the town that we were living in. And he pulled out these big poster size posters of um, female anatomy and was telling me what everything was. And then he's like, like literally rubbing his hands and big smile on his face. When can we examine? And I was a little creeped out by that. It's like, I don't know if I want you to. So um, I didn't go back to him and we went to another doctor and I said, we have had trouble consummating our marriage and he didn't know what consummating was. So I <laughs> gave up trust in him. Um, and you know, it was very isolating. I felt very alone. We had moved to a completely different state in the middle of the ocean where I knew nobody and could talk to nobody. I only had my husband who I felt like I was completely failing. Um, and after one really bad night, I went to work the next day and my new friend was like, hey, how was your night? What did you guys do? And I burst into tears and I told her everything and I spilled it all out what was going on with us. And it was, um, a great release for me to be able to talk to somebody other than just my husband about it. And um, eventually he ended up telling one of his friends, it was a mutual friend of ours, what was going on with us. And his friend had recommended an OBGYN in another town. So we went to her and she was awesome, super sweet. And she's like, I really don't know how to help you, but we can try. And she would try, you know, different anti-anxiety medications and have me come in um, to be examined. And I would be at the end of the table or jumping off the gurney, as Corey said. <laughs> Same thing for eyes shut, freaking out, crying. And I remember opening my eyes and her look over me and saying, I think something really bad happened to you. I think you must have blocked it out. You must have been raped at some point in your life. You really need to think about it. And I was like, I couldn't really think of anything that could have happened like that. Um, she prescribed a medication for me to try at home while we tried to have sex and like a numbing cream to put on my vagina. And what I don't remember what she gave me, but it left me high as a kite for at least 24 hours. My husband had to have our friend come and watch me so I didn't jump off the building because <laughs> I was hallucinating, talking to people when he's trying to have sex with me and I'm seeing people behind him. Um, not very romantic. Um, so then that doctor sent us to a psychiatrist who I went to and for about a year and a half with no success. She kept questioning if I really loved my husband. She kept questioning if maybe I was a lesbian, if I really didn't like penises, <laughs> um, all these different things. She sent me to a sex therapist um, who was, again, nice, um, got me a little bit more comfortable in my own skin a little bit. She had us take showers together and bathe each other and things like that, try to get comfortable, but it didn't really get down to the actual problem. Um, in this time, my husband's older brother was in medical school um, studying psychiatry. And in one of his medical books, in one paragraph, there was a mention of vaginismus. So in all of his training, there was one paragraph about it. This was you know, back in 2006 or seven, um, but he saw it and he was like, well, that sounds like what's going on with Megan. And obviously we've told our families about it by now. <laughs> so he, he started researching for us actually and found the Women's Therapy Center and sent us the information to it. Um, we were transitioning, my husband graduated from college and got an internship in Florida. So we were moving to Florida and I had researched it and looked at it and I was like, I think this is exactly what I have. I finally have a name for what this is, what's going on with me. Um, so we were in Florida. I had contacted the center. They emailed me right away and I kept kind of sitting on it. I was thinking, this is too good to be true. I've been to so many other doctors. This isn't going to happen. Um, or, you know, back then there was no YouTube videos and you know, no really, no Facebook group to talk to, nothing. I just, cause like, I was just thinking this is probably a scam. Like <laughs> there's no way that it could be this good, this true. Um, 
So I kind of just sat on it. They had given me numbers to call of previous patients to talk to. And I called them and I was like, maybe it could be one of their relatives that they're having talked to me. <laughs> I was super skeptical because I was like, I don't think that this is curable. I think that I'm going to suffer with this forever. So I decided to travel out to New York for a day. I was like, I just want to come meet you guys. <laughs> and thinking I would probably find nobody there. But no, they were there. <laughs> the office was there. The doctors were there. and. I started to feel a little bit more, okay, maybe. And like Corey had said, I felt like I would be, I was gonna be the one that's way too far gone. There's no way that they would be able to help me. Like I've, this is four years now that I haven't been able to have sex with my husband. Um, so I kind of sat on it again a little bit longer and I finally made the move to book it and so grateful that I did. Um, I went there, my husband came the second week. I went there by myself, which was terrifying for me. Like I was needed, I felt like I needed his support with me at all times, like my security blanket. <laughs> so going on my own, I was super nervous. And the first day I was able to have penetration. And in all of my life, I, I was 26, I had never had anything. I couldn't even touch myself down there, let alone look or try to insert anything. Um, and, you know, I swear, I thought there was a brick wall there. My husband said, there's a brick wall there. There's no, nothing going in. And the first day I was able to be penetrated. The first day I was able to put, insert my own finger and I was, finally had hope. <laughs> if I was able to get this far in the first day, I was still terrified that I didn't have the strength to do it. Um, but that went away really quickly. And my husband came out at the end of that week um, and over the weekend, he watched me do my homework. You go home with your dilators and you do your homework. And then you call Dr. Ross afterwards to let her know that it, everything was accomplished. Um, but he was amazed. He was amazed because all of these years, there was like, it was like a chastity bell across my vagina. And all of a sudden it was open. Um, so he, he would always tell me how proud he was and that it was just a very surreal moment that he's like, this is really going to happen. And then the second week we were able to have penetrative sex for the first time. And it was very mechanical and my leg's going to go here and your leg's going to go there. And, you know, it wasn't very romantic, but, <laughs> but I was able to do it. And, you know, I, it's been uh, 14 years now since I've been treated and, um, the beginning of those years, right afterwards, we had, had trouble conceiving. Um, we tried and couldn't, and I was able to do a transvaginal ultrasound where they insert the probe inside. And I was able to do that. And I had another x-ray exam where they insert, um, a tube and then insert contrast material into your fallopian tubes and things. And those are all things that I never, ever would have been able to do on my own. And I was able to do, um, after treatment, um, Three years or so after treatment, I had my, I was able to get pregnant with my first and, and I had my second two years later, both babies I had vaginally, um, with no complications. I was able to be examined at all of my appointments and it was no problems at all. I had an epidural just because I had an epidural, but my first one, it didn't really work except for my legs. So I was able to vaginally have a baby and feel it all and be totally fine. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's been, I mean, my youngest is eight years old now. Um, my husband and I have a very healthy, active, satisfying sex life, probably better now than it was back then. Um, I think it just gets better as <laughs> you age. Um, but that's pretty well our story. And I, I stay home with my kids. Um, I'm part-time student studying marriage and family studies and trying to someday, hopefully, help other women through some of these trials and that's me. 